Hi, my name is Martin Ivanovic. I'm a drum teacher and in this video I'm going to be reacting to and analyzing a live drum cam video from Francesco Paoli, drummer of Flash God Apocalypse, playing the song The Violation. Before we start out, I want to give a big shout out to Ian and Noel from Sick Drummer Magazine. This live drum cam video can be found on their YouTube channel, which I'm going to list below in the description. They have been doing a lot for this drumming community, so make sure to check out their YouTube page follow them and also check out their homepage as well, which I'm going to list in the description as well. All right, that's it. Let's start now with the violation. Alright, let's talk about one thing that's really interesting when it comes to this band. This band consists of a vocalist who's also playing guitar, second guitar player, bass player, piano or keyboard player, um, the drummer and an orchestra in the background. One thing that's not that easy is to write drum parts for a band like that because you always have to keep in mind that you want to push the band, it's still a metal band so you want blast beats and double bass in there, but still you have to leave some extra space especially for the orchestra. And in this special part right now, this intro, blast beat sequence, one thing that Francesco is doing is that he is with his right, he's playing a traditional blast beat, but his right hand, the accent, he's not following the guitar player, he's not following the bass or the vocals, he's following the orchestra. It works out great, it sounds great, but it's not that easy to play so many accents in between the blast beat and keeping the left hand, who's playing, he's playing an alternate blast beat, the left hand is playing off beat, to keep the left hand steady as well at the same time. All right, let's talk about his blast beats for a bit. When Francesco is playing a regular blast beat, right, left, right, left, he's always playing right hand lead. So the right hand is playing on the hi-hat, for example. The left is always playing off beat on the snare and all accents in between are also performed with the right hand. As soon as he switches to a bomb blast, which he is performing right now, um, his right hand switches to the snare drum, is playing on the beat, double bass 16th note underneath. So right hand is playing eighth notes on the snare, double bass 16 notes underneath and he's playing the accents with the left hand. He's using curl millimeter pedals. Again the bomb blast, right hand on the snare, additional blast with left hand on the snare. Since he's been playing double bass for so long, fast double bass, 16 notes, the song is at around 270 BPM. Let's talk about his foot technique for a bit. You can see that for the fast parts he's using the heel toe technique. In the last video I already talked about two different ways on how to be able to perform the heel toe technique. One is that your heel is also placed on the footboard, so you're playing heel toe on the footboard. Or the second way, just like Francesco does it in this video, slide your foot back on the footboard, your heel is right behind the heel plate of your pedal and then you're playing like this. Left foot as well. So here's some advice if you want to start out with the heel toe technique. At first when you start out you have to decide if you want to place your whole foot on the front part of the footboard like this or slide it back like this. Then the next step would be to work slowly with each foot separately. So right foot, left foot. Once you got that down, split the doubles between one hand and one foot at a time. So this example, my left hand is going to play a double, followed by a double with my right foot. Mm -hmm. 
Do this for long periods of time so you don't have to think about the foot technique or the foot motion any longer. Then do the same thing with the left foot. So left hand double followed by left foot double. And once you got that down and only when you are able to play with each foot separately, then put them together. Double with the right foot followed by double with the left foot. So once you're able to play slow doubles using the heel-toe technique, also switch to leading with your left foot. So don't play right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. Spend some extra time leading with the left foot. Left, left, right, left, 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 right, right. And once you got that down, also spend some extra time playing inverted doubles. Right, left, left, right, right, left, left. And inverted doubles leading with the left foot. Once you got those different stickings down, then it's time to increase the tempo. There's one more thing I have to add. I don't really use the heel toe technique just because I prefer single strokes. I prefer the sound of regular single strokes, I prefer how they feel, but to everyone their own. When you're using the heel toe technique you get one big advantage, which is it's easier to play for long periods of time at higher tempos. You still have to invest extra time to practice the technique, store it to your muscle memory and then you are able to perform that way. I still prefer single strokes but I have a lot of respect for drummers like Francesco who really push the limit with the heel toe technique. Alright, let's go on. Again, he's following the orchestra, with the right hand accent. Oh, that is a nice thing. Let's talk about his hand technique a bit, especially with the left hand. Um, he's using, he's playing American grip, so in between German and French grip. A um, lot of wrist motion involved as well but he's also using his fingers, especially his pinky, his ring finger and his middle finger. Same thing goes for the right hand. Also looks like American grip, although sometimes he's using some sort of push-pull technique, which we're gonna be analyzing a little bit later. Again the orchestration. Still the snare drum on the left hand, that steady offbeat, so great. Right now he's using the push-pull technique with his right hand. It's still American grip, but he's also incorporating a push-pull motion like this. Alright, let's continue. Section. As you can see right here is that he is leaning forward when he has to play the heel toe technique especially for longer periods of time. Actually, you know the thing is when you're playing fast double bass and it doesn't matter if it's if you're using the heel toe technique or a regular heel up for example, at a higher tempo you have to shorten the stroke. So now it's time to say it. It's not possible to play, for example, at 270 BPM, 60 notes, and get a really big beta swing for, for example, 90 degrees beta swing out of that motion. It's not possible. So you have to shorten the stroke at higher tempos. And there are two ways to do that. One way, and that's the way that Francesco is using, is that he's leaning forward. This way you got way more weight above, resting above the pedal and it's easier to push into the pedal. Plus there's one second thing that's really important. When you're leaning forward, you tend to shorten the range of motion for a hip flexor. For example, if I'm sitting up straight like this, it's easy to lift my hip flexor up like this. But if I lean forward like that, I'm limiting the range of motion and I can't lift my hip flexor that high anymore. So that's like one thing, you add, you lean forward, you add extra pressure, you got more weight above the pedal and that's how you play fast. But the bad thing about this is, and that's why I don't use it and I don't really recommend leaning forward like that, is that it puts a lot of stress on your lower back. 
Right now I'm 32 years old, so I don't have any problems with my lower back, but I still want to be able to play fast double bass in my 50s or 60s, so I tend to use a second way which doesn't put any stress on my lower back. Just sit straight like this and if you want to shorten the stroke and add extra pressure on the pedals, just contract your quads, your upper legs. Actually, it looks like the motion when you're trying to kick open a door, like this. That's the motion, but it's a constant contraction from my calf muscles that shortens the stroke like this and this way I'm able to play fast with the heel toe technique or with regular heel up. If you see a drummer out there who's playing above 250 BPM and he's not leaning forward, you can be pretty sure that he's applying extra pressure from his upper leg, his quads. All right, let's continue. That's also interesting. Now he's playing a regular fresh beat. Before this part, there was everything was bomb blast, traditional blast beats, long blast beat sections, long double bass sections. And now he's totally getting out of the way. And the reason for that is the following. Now the guitar solo started. So actually, Francesco is taking a step back and the guitar player, acoustically, is in the front right now performing his guitar solo. So I think Francesco and the whole band, they all have a musical sense of when it's time to push the drums and play fast double bass and stuff like that. And also when it's time to take yourself back a bit and make space for the other instruments. Now again, he's still in the background. Again, endless blast beats at 270 BPM. He doesn't look tired at all. Great. Of course, he gets a lot of power at his tom tips. No, he's not losing power. Nice game again. Great. Just pull with the right hand again. And that's again one of the parts where he is falling with his right hand, following the orchestra with the accents. Left hand still a mix of wrists and fingers. Close the wrist. Great drawing from Francesco, an awesome band. If you have the chance, go check them out live. Again, a big thank you to Sick Drum Magazine for these great drumming videos. I'm gonna link the original video in the description, so make sure to follow them and check out that video as well. One more thing, if you want a certain video to be next on this YouTube channel, please comment below and don't forget to also copy the YouTube URL for me to find the video. A lot of drummers asked for this exact video by posting the URL of this video. That's why I made this video for all of you. So thank you very much for watching. Cheers from Vienna. Bye.